start at the top. Here we go. Okay, so this is an arrow. Um, what if we have 10 grams of calcium phosphate? Oh, you can't see my screen. Hang on. And five grams of silicon dioxide. So because we're starting with two amounts, we're going to do the stoichiometry, grams to moles to moles to grams, but we're going to do it twice and see which one of these ran out first, and then we'll call one of these two reactants the limiting reactant. So um, there's two products, and either product could be assigned to be the thing we're solving for. It looks like uh, calcium silicate is going to be our product, and the question is how many grams can be produced? So I'm just going to start out the same way with both, 10 grams of calcium phosphate. And I know it seems like a lot to write. And I also know that the people I'm saying this to are probably not the people who need to hear it. Um, but you need to have complete units. Ooh, that's bad. I was <laughs> writing that on exams, you know, please include complete units with each step. And then I thought, if I don't take a point off, it's gonna be too big. If I don't take a point off, they're not gonna do it. So I'm gonna have to start taking points off when the steps don't include um, complete units, but you're the first to know, so now you know. Okay, and then according to the equation, two moles are consumed. every time six moles are produced of the product that we're looking for um, given in the problem. Okay, so those are the two answers I got. Is there somebody that can verify? Like, did you get that answer as well? I did, yes. Okay, good. Okay, so we started with both reactants and the given amounts, and then we went to products. And I can see that nine is less than 11. So I'm just gonna cross out the 11 grams of products that would have been made by calcium phosphate. So um, we can make at least 9.66 grams of product with calcium phosphate. In fact, we can make almost a couple grams more. That means calcium phosphate is in excess but the silicon dioxide ran out. And so because um, the silicon dioxide ran out at nine grams, we can only make at 9.7 grams, we can only make 9.7 grams of product with it. We ran out, we have extra calcium phosphate. That means it is the limiting reactant. Any calculations that I need to do from here are gonna start with it is the limiting reactant. So if there's a question like how much of the excess reactant remains, we start with the limiting reactant and then we figure out how much excess is needed. And then we have a subtraction step. So because I started with two sig figs, two sig figs, four unlimited, five, I end with two. And no, even though this step could be reduced, six over six is one, we don't do that because the person grading it needs to see that you found the sixes in the equation. The last thing that students sometimes do is for a molar mass. So there's two molar mass steps here. The question is how many grams in one mole? Let's look at the mass on a per mole basis. And sometimes students will take like this two and plug it into their molar mass or this six and plug it into their molar mass. So they'll have a six here and they'll multiply this by six, but that's wrong. So the molar mass is how many grams is one mole. And the stoichiometry step is moles of one thing in the balanced equation compared to moles of a different thing in the balanced equation. Get rid of those sixes because they're wrong. Okay, next question says, how much of the excess reactant remains? And that's a pretty typical question. So I'm gonna start with the limiting reactant. 
I'm going to do the same process, but this time I'm going to go from grams of silicon dioxide to grams of the other thing, the reactant in excess. So when I come up with the answer, I'm not done because what I've just found is how much of the excess reactant do I need? And now I need to compare that to how much I have. I started with 10 grams of the calcium phosphate. And 8.6 grams will be consumed as reactants become product. So it looks like there's 1.4 grams of calcium phosphate left over in theory, according to our calculations. Okay, so tetraphosphorus decoxide can be reduced by carbon. And here we have an unbalanced equation. Even if we weren't told it was unbalanced, we could look at the coefficients and see that they're all one. And that would put a question mark in our heads. Once we see that all the coefficients are one, we think, is this balanced? Let me just double check. And so when I check, I see that there's 10 oxygens on one side, but only one on the other. So that's a problem. Phosphorus is one of our three polyatomic, or actually 10 polyatomic. We have seven diatomic and three poly uh, elements. I think it's balanced now. How many grams of carbon are required to reduce 7.3324 grams of the other reactant? So I'm going to go from uh, tetraphosphorus decoxide to carbon, grams to moles to moles to grams, same process. I'm going to round to four sig figs because um, according to our periodic table, our molar masses only go to the hundreds place. And so I have five sig figs times five times unlimited times four. And that is probably different than your um, the key, which is at the end of the assignment. So I got 3.102 grams of carbon. Did anybody else get that? I also got that. Okay, good. Next question, let's see. How many grams of phosphorus are produced? Because this is B and this was A, I'm gonna assume that that's, we have the same starting amount. So this time I'm gonna go from reactant to product and do part B. So I know the number on the key was 3.2. And um, I talked to a few students about this last night. These are essentially the same number. They differ by three in the 10 thousandths place. And if it differs by a little bit in the last place, they're the same number. The reason this is different is because when I wrote this assignment and made the answers for it a long time ago, I was using a periodic table that said um, the molar mass of oxygen wasn't 16.00, it had more sig figs. And that probably changed some of the calculations just a little bit. Okay, how many grams of phosphorus? We got that. Number three, 
Um, all the numbers are one, so even if it didn't say unbalanced, we know that we need to balance it. And here we're looking for a percent yield. Percent yield is going to be the actual, which is measured on a balance, divided by the theoretical, which is calculated. It's usually the smaller divided by the larger. Uh, but there are some times in lab when we have a source of error, we actually get more than 100%, which isn't real. But that's how the calculations work out. Okay, so the actual is something that has to be measured, but because we're um, not in lab, we can't measure things. So when it says only 9.1 grams are formed, that's going to be our actual. Okay. <clears throat> To find our theoretical, this isn't a limiting reactant problem. We're just, we don't only give them one starting amount. So grams to moles to moles to grams. Okay, so here we're doing um, using percent yield from a different direction. So now we're given 14 grams of phosphorus are reacted. And from the reacted, we're going to get to the theoretical yield. And then we're told what the percent yield is. So we're starting with uh, a number on the left. And the theoretical, and what we're solving for is the actual. So as soon as I see percent yield, I start setting it up like this in my mind. Actual, theoretical, 100%, percent yield. And I see, oh, I, I know this number. It's 77.2%. I can figure out this number by going from grams to moles to moles to grams. What I'm solving for is the numerator here. So for the math, the first thing I knew to do is get rid of 100% by dividing both sides by 100%. And then I get 0 0.772 on the right, and there's no percent sign, and that's good. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 24.8. And I got 19.18 grams, but I'm only good to three sig figs, so 19.2 grams. Okay, that's all I got. You're welcome to uh, stay or go.